مستر ايمانويل امونيكي اكس سوبر ستار اوف ذا نيجيريان ناشونال تيم الزمالك سبورتنج كلوب دي برتغال اند برشلونة اند اكس كوتش اوف تنزانيا ناشونال تيم تشامبيون اوف ذا وورلد كاب اندر 17 وذ ذا سوبر ايجلز اند كورنت كونسلتنت كوتش اوف ذا ناكو اف سي مستر امونيكي ويلكم تو فيلجو ثانك يو فيري ماتش Okay, let's get into the business. Uh, FIFA World Cup 1994, the fair participation of Nigeria, and yet the best. You scored so many headers throughout your career. What or was it your first header or best header against Bulgaria? Well, I think uh, as a player, you know, uh, having the opportunity to be in the World Cup and then also scoring, I think it's an amazing moment. Uh, I remember that game against Bulgaria in Texas, if I'm not mistaken. I think uh, we all went into that game with a, a high hope and with a lot of expectations in terms of uh, being our first time of uh, you know playing in the World Cup. But of course, you know, uh, playing in the World Cup and uh, scoring a goal, I think, is so amazing and. Uh, Uh, it gives you, you know, a lot of confidence to continue, you know, to to demonstrate and prove who you are in terms of your quality as a player. You scored a marvelous goal that day, but the guy who got the spotlight was uh, Rashidi Akini because of the celebration. It was so authentic. Well, Akini was uh, was the star of the team, and uh, going into the World Cup, uh, and uh, I think he scored the first goal. A cross from George Finney from the right side, and then uh, he pushed the ball into the net. And I think we needed that kind of goal. We needed the goal to to establish ourselves into the team. Uh, uh, looking at the Bulgarian team with a lot of great players like Stochkov, Balakov, Diodanov. Uh, these are great players that are playing at top level, and uh, most of us are, you know, uh, are playing in Europe, and some of us are playing in Africa. But you know, uh, for Yekini, uh, we have always looked onto him, and uh, when he scored the goal, like, you know, everybody were happy. Uh, people were happy, and uh, the confidence of the team, you know, begins to grow. And uh, we believe that uh, uh, we have the opportunity or the possibility of winning the game. Yeah, another unforgettable element of the of that tournament for Nigeria was the shirt. 28 years uh, have passed and people keep remembering the shirt. It was so unique. Yeah, the shirt was so unique and it was so in terms of uh, uh, attractive and, uh, you know, it's a catching, how will I put it, it's a kind of a catching flash when you look at the jersey. Uh, everybody wants to associate with the jersey. I think it was a beautiful jersey that was made by Adidas. And uh, today we are trying to replicate the jersey from Nike, but I know it's not going to be the same because that jersey was unique and that jersey was a, a special jersey in terms of uh, uh, for us as a nation and as a, a team be playing the first time in the World Cup and then coming up with such amazing jersey. I think it was so attractive to people and everybody wants to associate with the jersey and also with the team. What does it feel entering the field and your opponent is called Diego Armando Maradona? Well, it's a very big, uh, <laughs> I think, inspiration in terms of, like, uh, I particularly, I grew up by watching Diego playing in the World Cup in Mexico. And then after some years, I was privileged to, to be on the same field with him in the World Cup and played against him. I think. It's something inspiring. It's an amazing thing. It's an opportunity. And then uh, you look at him and uh, you see that this is someone that, uh, you know, uh, that can move a lot of people with just the talent he got. And then today you are standing and then going to play against him. I think you say, for me, it's a very good privilege and I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity and I'm happy that I was able to play against him. It was uh, his last ever international game that makes it an even more special event. Yeah, that was his last game. I think after the game, you know, they, they took him for, for the doping. But of course, uh, you cannot forget what he has done and uh, his contributions to the game. 
the game against Italy was uh, painful. Your goal was more than enough till the last minute of the game. Ah, it was a sad. Uh, I think that was one of the longest nights. That game was played around one o'clock, and after that, we went to the hotel. It was a very long night, a very long thinking. Uh, what? Uh, we could have done to be better, to be in a position to, you know, to achieve our objectives. But of course, we were not at, the, at, at that time. We scored earlier, if I'm not mistaken, at 26th of uh, minutes of the game, uh, through a corner, and then the, the rebound came to my direction. I just gave it a touch, and it went in. We defended very well towards two minutes to the end of the game. But unfortunately, you know, we committed uh, some uh, naive uh, mistakes and uh, we were punished by that. Uh, the Italians, they have a lot of experience. They have a lot of players, great players, with experienced players. So uh, when you commit such a, a, a blunder, or how will I put it, such mistakes, you know, they capitalize on that by through uh, Baggio who was at the best at that uh, World Cup uh, in the United States of America. But of course, it was a painful exit. Uh, we had it in our arm to progress to the next stage, but uh, uh, we were not able to, to, you know, to keep it clean and maintain uh, the, the, the lead that we had at, from the beginning of the game. 1994 was a magical year for you. Your brace against Zambia led Nigeria to the African title. It was weird because you hadn't played the previous games, you know? Well, it's not about uh, I think our team, we had uh, we, ha we, we have great players. And uh, the whole 23 players that went to the AFCON, even the ones that we had dropped, uh, they also deserve to be in that team because we have very good players. Uh, not playing is not because you are not in at the best moment. But of course, the only the important thing is as a player, even if you are not playing, is to always, uh, you know, be with a, a positive mind and then continue to work. Uh, when the opportunity, you know, comes your way, you can be able to, uh, not to prove anything to anybody, is to at least uh, contribute and add value to your team. And that is exactly what happened. I uh, was not been able to play throughout the tournament. And then in the final, the coach decided to, you know, to bring me in. And then uh, I must be able to be in a position to help my team because somebody else has been playing there. And uh, the person also has contributed a lot that lead us to be in the final. So it's also my turn to, to play my part. And that's what I did. Uh, sometimes being in the final is not because uh, you have the best players. Uh, you and I know that uh, there are a lot of factors that can make a team to be in the final and also can make a team regardless of the quality of their players they can also lose not to be in the final so we were just uh, thinking of how to play our game and also you know try to play as a team uh, when you look at the team individually we have a lot of talented players but how can we now uh, play as a team collectively uh, without undermining the individual qualities that are in the team I think that is the key word that uh, actually, you know, lead us to, to play in that final against Zambia. Uh, Zambia also was a great team. Uh, looking at the history of what happens to them six, uh, six months to the AFCON, uh, losing all their players and then within a short period of time, they were able to raise great team and they get to the final. So the final was a kind of a mix with a lot of sentiment, mixed with a lot of uh, a reaction mixed with a lot of hope. Uh, Zambia on one side, if you look at things, deserve to be, win the cup to you know to honor their lost heroes. Nigeria also looking at the players that we possessed, it's a, a right time to to really demonstrate to Africa and that we have a very good team. And uh, that is exactly what we did. But at the end of the day, for me personally, yeah, Nigeria we won the Afcon. But also, the Zambian team, you know, uh, has to be credited and respected uh, uh, through the effort they have put from, from day one to be in the final. But is it hard playing against such a, um, a team with a, tra with a tragic situation? Well, it, one way, emotionally, it was hard. 
in times of uh, uh, most of those guys that uh, lost their life, uh, they are also like us, or like we playing on that day at that uh, final. Uh, they deserve not to, you know, to lo lose their lives. But of course, you know, when it comes to death, uh, it's beyond human uh, recognition and human understanding. Uh, the, the feeling was a kind of mix. Yeah, but, you know, when you are on the field of play, you, you, as a player, as a professional, uh, you are basically not thinking about anything. It's about the game, uh, to win the game, to give the best. But of course, you also have that uh, human part of you, the empathy side of, uh, of you as a woman, to also recognize that uh, the other team also, uh, they also deserve to win. They could have also won the game. So it's a kind of a mix, mixed reaction. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. I can avoid asking you about the Olympic Games, beating Brazil with a crazy scenario and then clenching the victory against the other Latin giant, uh, Argentina. But this time you were the ultimate hero. Ah, hero. I was just doing my things. <laughs> it's not about being a hero. Uh, someone have scored from the beginning of the tournament and, uh, and his goals also have taken us to, to the final. Uh, someone scored in the quarter final against Mexico. Someone scored in, against Brazil. Uh, and then someone scored before I even scored. So I think we were all just doing our things. We were just, uh, you know, uh, having it in mind that uh, it could be an opportunity in times of, uh, in the beginning of the tournament, I think nobody gave Africa the opportunity of, you know, winning it. Uh, but as the tournament uh, progresses and uh, uh, we begin to realize that uh, we can, you know, we can achieve it not only for us, also for Africa as a continent. I think that was where the first major uh, tournament that uh, Africa has won uh, when it comes to football. So I think that paved the way and uh, in the next edition, Cameroon also went and won it against Spain in the final. So uh, it wasn't about being a hero, it's about, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing what you love mostly and then uh, having the grace to be uh, among the people that are involved in the final and then uh, you score the goal that eventually you know brought the good uh, medal to to your team to your country and to African continent so for me it's not about being a hero it's just uh, we are doing what we love which is football yeah was it frustrating not having the opportunity to retain the African title in 1996 and not, not to be able to participate in 1998 as well? Well, it was a little bit frustrating because we knew that uh, we have a great team and uh, going to South Africa, uh, it will be another opportunity to win the cup again. Uh, but you know, when it comes to politics, there is nothing uh, we can do on that. Uh, footballers, we are not politics, and uh, we are not politicians. I mean, and when it comes to uh, a dispute between country and country, uh, there are something that uh, is beyond your control. But of course, it was a disappointing moment for the team because we were in Lagos preparing, training, and hoping that. Uh, uh, eventually, uh, there will be peace or understanding between the two countries. But uh, finally, it didn't work out. So, but it was a disappointment because also, uh, I could say Africa also lost the opportunity of seeing great generation. Uh, because Nigeria at that particular time, we were the best. We were at the top of our football. But unfortunately, we were not there. And at the end of the day, the host country, you know, uh, they won the tournament, uh, beating, I think, uh, Tunisia in the final. Uh, so, but, uh, you know, we just need to learn to move ahead. Uh, you missed the 1998 World Cup. Describe the feeling of missing the World Cup due to injury. Well, it was a sad moment uh, because I played all the qualifying game and I was one of the instrumental players in the team. Uh, but I think uh, six or five months to the World Cup, I was injured. I had a surgery on my knee and uh, I was not able to, 
to recover on time to be you know, it's a sad moment uh, uh, me not being there also you know gives other people opportunity uh, for example like Gabalawa uh, was able to you know make the team and he was able to help the team he was also able to to establish himself uh, to being one of the best players also in African continent so I think it was a sad moment for me, but also it was a good thing for the young ones that are coming behind us to have the opportunity to, to participate in the World Cup in France. Well, let's talk a little bit about your spell in Portugal. Carlos Queiroz was your coach, and recently we, the Egyptians, had the chance to observe him. How was working with Queiroz and how you evaluate his spell with the Faroes? Well, I think uh, it's a very unfortunate uh, thing that, uh, you know, Egypt, uh, they were there, they lost the final and then they missed out uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the work of uh, true penalties. Uh, but, you know, when it is penalties, there is nothing a, a coach or a player can do on that issue. Uh, but I think also, with all due respect to, to the Egyptian people and uh, their decisions, which has to be respected, I think also they would have, you know, they could have had a little bit of patience because uh, uh, Kerosh, I think he has started to, you know, to bring out that uh, chemistry in the Egyptian player. When you look at how they played in the Afcon, I was in Cameroon, I was in Garua, you know, with CAF on technical uh, study group matter. Uh, against Nigeria, okay, they lost to Nigeria, but uh, as the tournament progresses, they were able to, you know, build a solid team that is very, very difficult to beat uh, in terms of their ability to defend as a team. Uh, I think they have that this team, uh, but of course, you know, the decisions sometimes uh, in Africa, sometimes we make decisions by our emotion, uh, basically, or sometimes when things didn't work the way we expected, we decide, okay, the coach need to go, everybody need to go. No, but football is a, it's a plan. And uh, it's not because Kerosh was my coach. Uh, he was a very good coach. Uh, I learned a lot of things under him when I was playing in sporting, under him. Uh, even from far distance, I, learned, I still learned a lot of things uh, in the preparation, in the approach, uh, from tactical point of view, individually, collectively. So he's a coach with a lot of experience. And uh, I, I, I will always say I'm privileged to have played under him in Sporting Lisbon. And I hope, you know, he will find somewhere uh, better and where he can continue to inspire people and, uh, you know, uh, bring confidence to the players. Yeah, you also played with uh, Luis Figo, later uh, you coincided with him at uh, Barcelona. How did you react with his transfer to Real Madrid? It felt like the end of the world for the, for the coolies. Well, Luis Figo is a player. We are all players. Uh, our job is today you are here, tomorrow you are somewhere else. So the, the reality is that uh, he's having a professional mind and uh, remaining positive. Uh, before Luis Figo came to Barcelona, he was playing in somewhere else. So uh, when he left uh, Sporting, also the people in Sporting could have felt that that's the end of Sporting. So I think uh, <laughs> the important thing is that uh, we have to respect his decisions. Uh, football is crazy. Today you might be the king, tomorrow the club might not want you. So uh, we respect people's and the club uh, opinion. The important thing is that uh, you have been able to, to give the best you can. Would you have played for El Ahli, for example? If Ali have approached me before Zamalek, why not? Why? And after? <laughs> and after? What if Zamalek, if Zamalek does not want me when I was there and Ali want me, there is nothing wrong in playing for the Ali. Ali, they are not, uh, they are not my enemy. They are not uh, uh, this thing. I'm a, Zamal I'm a Zamalek player and I'm happy that uh, my playing days, I was able to, you know, contribute uh, to the success of the team uh, when I was there. So even Ali, in as much as 
uh, okay, we are rival, rivalry in terms of one another. But of course, also when they are playing, they are representing Egypt. Uh, when Zamalek is playing, they are representing Egypt. Uh, you have seen a lot of players move from Zamalek to Ali, Ali to Zamalek. So it wasn't a new thing. Football is changing and uh, people mindset are changing. Uh, if you, are, you can be in Ali, you are not having enough game uh, time. Uh, maybe Zamalek can say, okay, let's take him. If, if the opportunity is there, why not? Why can't you go and play for Zamalek? He can also be in Zamalek. Uh, maybe you are not having enough time. You want to go and Zamalek Ale can say, come and play for us. Why not? So, you know, it's just uh, the world are globalizing. People are, uh, you know, are changing. People are adapting. But the important thing is the respect. You must learn to respect everybody. Uh, Ali, they are good size. Amalek is a good team also with a lot of history. So, uh, the Egyptians, they are even, they, I could say they are lucky that uh, they have two big teams uh, that are doing very well when it comes to continental games that have represented Egypt in, in African level. That um, many players have you know, come out from Zamalek and Ali to represent the national team. And they have done so well. So I think it's something to be proud of. It's not something uh, to be dragging about uh, competition between one another. Yeah, uh, we players, uh, we have respect for ourselves. We might be enemy on the field, but after the game, when we see each other on the street, we're always greeting each other and hugging each other. Yeah. I know you struggled to adapt to Zamalek. Uh, you were basically a teenager when you arrived. Well, it's a normal thing when you come to a place new. You, you, it takes time a little bit uh, with the change of culture, uh, change of lifestyle, change of everything. Uh, so it takes time. But I don't think I, I struggle to adapt. No, uh, I didn't struggle. I took my time. Uh, I was training extraly uh, to prepare myself because I came when the league already have started, and I arrived on. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I arrive on Tuesday and then on Friday I played the game. So there was no much time to, uh, to you know, have that chemistry with my teammates. Uh, there was no much time to train, to, to be fit. But, you know, as the league progresses, I was able to, to establish myself. Well, I spent most of the time, I think, with Nabi Mahmoud. Uh, I spend most of the time and uh, he is the one I go with when we are going to the camp. Uh, he carries me in his car. But uh, for me, it's not about the best teammate. Uh, all my teammates in Zamalek at that particular time, I have a very good relationship with them. Uh, uh, Hussein, I, don't, I forget his surname, that play right fullback. He was my neighbor in the building we were living. So I have a very good relationship with Shamiaka, the captain. Uh, well, was a very good friend, uh, Ashraf Kasim, Jimmy, uh, Red Abdullah, uh, Shishini, uh, Khaled Gandu, many, most all the players, you know, I have a very good relationship with them. So for me, they are all important to me and uh, I thank them a lot, you know, for their support and uh, for bringing me into the team, for helping me, uh, for believing in me also. And uh, with this, we were able, you know, uh, to achieve all we achieved during uh, the time I was there. What does it feel entering the Bistuario uh, of Barcelona with all the stars he had? Well, what does it feel? Uh, of course, uh, it's a one step ahead from um, uh, from Zamalek to Sporting Lisbon, then Sporting Lisbon to, to Barcelona. It's a one step ahead, but there is... Uh, there is nothing in terms of uh, uh, the feeling. The feeling is okay. You are you are now you know you are moving to another level. Uh, in terms of club, in terms of uh, uh, expectations, in terms of uh, uh, everything that uh, surround the club. So for me, I was calm, and uh, also like I said, uh, I also met a dressing room that uh, that is accommodating. So uh, when I came also, they accommodated me, they made it easier for me to adapt. So for me, I'm, I'm always calm. I'm not, uh, yeah, you have that expectation, okay? 
how the journey will look like, what might be the journey. But at the end of the day, you just have to be composed and calm within yourself. You played against Maradona, but also you played uh, with Ronaldo Fenon. Uh, well, we knew. I played against him at the Olympic. Uh, so we, we, we had a little bit of uh, what he is capable of doing. And then playing with him in Barcelona is, uh, is something that's, uh, uh, you know, he, he's one of the best strikers that uh, uh, that combines a lot of things in terms of technique, speed, agility, uh, finishing. So he's a complete striker. He's a very, very complete striker. And that is why he's being called Phenomena. <laughs> well. Um, going to the future, is that true that you refused to work with uh, Gernot Rohr as a German coach of uh, Nigeria? Nobody approached me. No. You know. <laughs> Nobody approached me. Uh, but it's not about working with him or not. Uh, it's not about working with him. Yeah, he's a great coach, you know, and uh, he, wa he was able to, you know, to change our football because he came uh, when our football was done and uh, we have to recognize that uh, he did a lot of work he transmitted a lot of confidence to the players so but it's not about working with him uh, nobody approached me to work with him uh, he himself did not approach me to work with him so people were just kind of uh, speculating and uh, creating a rumor but of course that scenario never happened well Thank you, Mr. Amaniki, for your time. It was a pleasure having you on Phil Gold. Thank you very much. Thank you. Un abrazo, muchos saludos. Igualmente, gracias. All right.